compression tights on, comfy shoes, like already breathless. And this video hasn't even begun. <sighs> Hello, I've been taking the last few months as a period of time to just focus, immerse, learn about the different sewing techniques, fit silhouettes that go into making clothes that's just much more size flexible. Putting those into practice in the garments that I've made has been super fun and I thought I'd just put together a thorough compilation of all the things I made while pregnant so that if you're scared to sew the types of garments that are very unforgiving when it comes to fit. I feel like this video is going to give you some great inspiration and ideas to make some cute new things for you. Everything I sewed while pregnant was made with the hope and intent that I would still get to enjoy it no matter what happened to my body shape or whatever after the pregnancy part was over. And to help me show you all these items, this video is also sponsored by Saludos. Saludos. They're a company that makes really comfy, feel-good, planet-friendly sneakers. A lot of very cute styles to pick from. I will show you more later in the video. Ruching. Typically, I find ruching kind of serves two purposes. One is to show off the texture of a fabric. The other is a bit of a smoothing effect. I think it just creates visual distraction, so you don't look as much at the form underneath because it's just like shua, shua, shua. Because of all the extra fabric ruching packs in, I think that's what makes it work so well for size flexible clothing. So yeah, I feel like especially for summer, ruching, cutouts, vaccines. These two, I feel like, are gonna be those ooh and ah accents you can add to existing clothes for a thrift flip or something that you make from scratch. Alrighty, overalls. This one I feel like deserves the meme, like you can fit so many body changes in this sucker. These are the pants that come with built-in pulleys. I actually have already loosened it from when I made it. If pants intimidate you, not speaking from personal experience, overalls are such a great place to start because it's not dependent on you getting the waist and the hips perfectly right, since really the one thing keeping these from falling down is just your shoulders. I had just the right amount of corduroy left over to make these, but if you wanted to make them out of linen, twill, denim, they would look so cute. At one point I even considered the design choice of just putting a grommet here, and then you can tie the strap through it, gives you a little more Oh, natural look. Super happy with how these turned out and very weather versatile because it really just depends on what you wear underneath on top. Continuing on in the theme of intimidation, if pants intimidate you, might I suggest stretchy shorts. This is a lounge set that I made out of a knit terry fabric. So not only is it stretchy, but also highly absorbent. In case I spill water on the ground, I can just lay down on top of it and pretend nothing to see here. This is part of a video where I tried to draft the perfect fit bottoms. I did two techniques. One of them is free and you could do it right now, which is from a blog post. I'll put a link in the description. And the other one was using my Letterlo kit. It's a kit that follows the golden rules of human proportions. Granted, I don't really think having a pregnant belly falls within the golden rule too much. So I also showed how to add the adjustments so that you could get like ultra high waist if you wanted. If dressing as a human towel is not really up your alley, I feel like this exact same cut of shorts in like a black spandex would look super sporty. But yeah, all in all, such a comfortable set. Super happy that I finally made something out of this terry knit that I had. This year I felt especially proud of myself to have dramatically improved my technical skills with knit fabric. I've been using ballpoint needles so that it's not poking new holes into an already holy fabric. I've been hemming with little elastics. If you want a true just pull over your head turtleneck or mock neck, I advise finding the stretchiest fabric you can. This one still didn't have the full amount of give and so you'll have to hack it with like putting an invisible zipper into the back or in this case I added these little snaps to kind of like that turtleneck was in the same video as this turtleneck dress. I tried to do a couple of different techniques like lettuce hemming on the sleeves and on the bottom as well as this drawstring 
ruching detail. This has been my go-to dress to wear with sneakers ever since making it. It's so comfortable. My belly button says hi. And for sneakers, I've been so happy with my Saludos also sponsoring this video. I've got them in two styles with this dress. I like to wear these yin yang print ones. They have a little bit of fuzziness, which I think adds such a cute character. And the black and white makes it a bold design, but also super versatile to match with anything. With Saludos, you can expect great craftsmanship. They use soft premium leathers. The shoelaces are recycled. There are nice cushy molded insoles. This yin yang in design was created in partnership with Parisian born, lives in Hawaii artist Marie Sophie Lockhart. With Saludos, you can always expect great craftsmanship so they last a long time, soft premium leather, and if you want a vegan leather alternative, these pink and white shoes that I was wearing at the beginning are plant based. They are made with sustainable and eco friendly ingredients such as corn, recycled and natural rubber, and organic cotton. It looks like leather, but they're made from plants. This is the Yabo line from Saludos. Even the logo is printed with soy based ink. So wherever possible, they're trying to make it sustainable and vegan. Both of these pairs that I own are super comfortable, really lightweight. Selfishly, one of these pairs has never been let outside so that I can enjoy wearing it indoors and prevent my feet from being sore and swollen by the end of the day. They have so many cute styles to choose from. If you want to try for yourself to see how comfy they are, use the link below. You'll get $15 off plus free shipping on your own pair of saludos. <laughs> Thank you, Saludos, for helping me to still be standing this long into the video. <laughs> oh, the last thing I'll say about this dress is there's a future video coming where I take the lettuce edge to the next level. I'm super excited to show that to you. This is the insto. Stay tuned. To say I love this dress is a huge understatement. It was so much work, even with my assistant Julia helping me out but I love it. The Empire Silhouette, close cousin slash maybe the same to baby doll silhouette, is a very fluctuation friendly fit. In the video where I made this dress, I kept calling it Empress Waist. I'm so sorry, you guys. Empire Waist or Empire Silhouette, though it was Napoleon's first Empress, Josephine de Beauharnais, who popularized the silhouette. Interestingly though, as period drama as this looks, it's actually a silhouette that's making quite a comeback. You can see it in the designs well loved by Cecily Bunsen, as well as Selkie, fitted bodice, puffed sleeves, also seen in the cottagecore milkmaid trends. I don't quite remember how far along in my pregnancy I was when I made this, but even today as I pulled it out of the closet, I was like, for sure, this one's going to fit. This was one of the rare thrift flips that I got to do during pregnancy and COVID. Used to be a baby doll maternity dress, I guess it still is. It almost was too small for me in the beginning, one of the perils of shopping online for clothes instead of getting to try it on in store. The thrift flip adjustment I made to it was to completely open up the back. This used to have a high round neck in the back, but by making it a deep V, I was able to give it just a little bit more breathing room. If I had anywhere fancy to go during this time, I definitely would have worn this. The silk crushed chiffon is so pretty, but uh, she hasn't gotten a lot of wear. Can't even look at these things without feeling warm, but puffy accessories. We made this nice little tucked scarf. Julia did some serious witchcraft to get this beautiful seam action right here. You should definitely watch the video to see the skills. This ended up being so fun to wear with winter looks that lacked a hood. The one downside being, and if you have any experience in a cold environment wearing a hood, is when you cross the street and you can't like, casually look both ways, you're like whipping your head. <laughs> this hood requires you to do a bit of that. This Chanel jacket came with a skirt to make a whole suit set, but in a recent video, I packed away all of the clothes that no longer fit me. Definitely that skirt was included. This jacket though, she has helped me through many a Zoom meeting, and I still can't believe how inexpensively we pulled off this lush tweed-like texture from an Ikea blanket. Oh, I guess this is also a thrift flip, a very aggressive thrift flip. There's often a moment where I upload a video and suddenly there's a whole bunch of comments educating me about something I didn't know about before. 
Thank you for educating me kindly. In this case, it was that an authentic Chanel jacket most often has more chain sewn in on the inside bottom hem of the jacket, and that just helps give it some weight so that it hangs perfectly on your shoulders. All in all, uh, oh no, Sagwa. <laughs> my notes because she's pressing the keyboard. <laughs> Who's our little troublemaker? Man, I have done more thrift flips than I thought. So this used to be a long cardigan, but I shortened it and took all the excess fabric to make a little crop top. I've just been wearing it so much and I think it's because the blue is a really happy shade. The collar makes it look a little bit slightly preppier and more put together. And then the pearl buttons make it feel just a little bit fancier. When it comes to making clothes that has a flexible fit, cardigans I think are a great choice because you can adjust how you do up the buttons to whatever mood you're in that day. Giving it a little matching crop top underneath is also genius because then no matter how you wear it, everything is covered up, but it still looks cohesive since it's the same fabric. I've been wearing this a lot with the ultra high waist <laughs> compression leggings. It just helps me feel like I can get things done. And reaching all the way back to when I didn't even know I was pregnant yet, I made my own bras and larger or more tender breasts. It was a very common pregnancy side effect. So sadly, these were also shortly enjoyed. These were based on a pattern by Emerald Erin. I had this lovely French dot, ooh la la as well as one that was more skin tone. I guess if I had to give my two cents on whether pregnancy is a good time to perfect your bra making skills, I'm gonna say no. However, I also follow Emerald Erin on Instagram and she makes really cute swimwear ideas using the bra patterns all the time. She posts so many good ideas. And with swimwear, I think there's a little bit more leeway. I didn't have access to a pool over the last year, but if you do, go ahead and make yourself a swim set. I think that will be a very gratifying way of doing bras but not doing bras okay i'm bringing in the chair so to summarize i found the items that were more focused on how they fit just at the shoulders or at the chest had more longevity to them if the belly area or hips area is loose that's an item that will have much more longevity for different fluctuations second thing stretch fabrics love knits, love spandex. There's often comments on videos of people who have some knit issues to troubleshoot. I wish I had better advice to share, but I often, I often don't know. It's very unique to the circumstances, but um, if you guys can help each other out with knit troubleshooting in the comments, I think that would be really great. The third thing I would say is if possible, think of ways you can incorporate closures that are adjustable, like the overalls with the adjustable straps, as well as tie closures, because then you can do it as tight or as loose as you like. Take for example, the Cecily Bonson inspired wrap coat I made a while ago. It has an inner tie closure plus an outer tie closure. So there's a lot of space flexibility, plus on top of that having a baby doll shape. So if you stack these things, you're gonna get a super flexible garment. <laughs> Those of you who are keen on doing the math, you can now check your numbers. I am currently eight months pregnant and I have two more big DIY projects that I'm super excited to share with you all. After that, I hope you'll understand that I'm going to need some time to adjust to parenting as well as to heal physically. <laughs> But I will be back, so stay tuned. Thank you for coming with me on my sewing journey, and I really hope that it's been inspiring and encouraging to you on your own sewing journey as well. I love you all, and I hope you're taking care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.